So we've talked about functions that grow to infinity, but what about the opposite end, the infinitesimal world? What about functions that decay to zero? Let's recall what happens when we're going to infinity, right? Recall the polynomial hierarchy. There's this strict domination based on the powers in the monomial terms. So x is less than x squared, is less than x cubed, is less than x to the fourth. There's that hierarchy of polynomial growth. Okay, okay, now what happens when you take reciprocals? This ordering, this hierarchy is reversed when you take the reciprocals of these terms. So what I mean by that is one over x is bigger than one over x squared, is bigger than one over x cubed, etc., etc. Again, this is all in the limit as x is going to infinity. What happens if instead of taking that limit, we reverse, we go to zero? So instead of x getting larger and larger and larger, x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, everything flips. All the inequalities are reversed in the limit. As x goes to zero, x dominates x squared, which dominates x cubed, which dominates higher and higher powers, just like we've seen when we're doing Taylor expansions. On the other hand, the reciprocals are blowing up to infinity and there is a reverse domination there. One over x is less than one over x squared, etc. This is really worth contemplating. If you look in the limit near x equals zero and you consider the higher and higher powers of x, x to the n, compare that to the roots, x to the one over n. There's a beautiful symmetry or duality there. But this continues. If you look at what happens in the limit as x goes to infinity, this symmetry persists and is really beautiful and exists also when you're looking at negative powers. So x to the minus n or x to the minus one over n. Together, this entire system is really beautiful, really worth getting in your head now as we think more about asymptotics. Now, why do I keep going on about this? Well, this is relevant to using leading order terms when you're doing limits, like we did, say, in the last chapter or two. Consider, for example, the limit as x goes to zero of the following rational function. Up top, we have the polynomial x cubed minus 7x squared plus 5x plus 3. In the denominator, we have the polynomial 4x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 2. If we're taking the limit as x goes to zero, then what I'm tempted to do in this case is rearrange those terms from lowest order to highest order. Just reverse the polynomials. That doesn't change anything, of course, but it makes it look a little bit more like what we see when we're doing Taylor expansions. And I can easily see that all the higher order terms are going to zero, albeit at different rates. In the end, what matters is the leading order terms, three up top, two below, leading to a final answer of three halves. Now, if instead of going to zero, we take the limit as x goes to infinity of the same rational function, then it's a totally different story because of the way that these powers work. Now, the leading order terms are the cubic terms. And if we factor out an x cubed from the numerator, from the denominator, then what is left over is up top something of the form one minus seven over x plus five over x squared plus three over x cubed. And then down below four minus one over x minus three over x squared plus two over x cubed. All of those higher order terms are going to zero more and more rapidly as x goes to infinity. And so in the end, this limit evaluates to the ratio of the leading order terms. In this case, x cubed divided by 4x cubed, leading to a final answer of 1 fourth. It's this pattern that we see. X is going to zero on one side. X is going to infinity on the other side. Totally changes what is meant by a leading order term. 
always, always pay attention to whether you're going to zero, whether you're going to infinity, whether you're dealing with infinitesimals or infinite terms. Now, when doing some problems like this, it sure seems like there's some interesting patterns, some structure here. Can we take advantage of that? What can we do to make sense of all this? We've only been talking about the polynomial hierarchy here. We still have the exponential hierarchy. We still have all the logs. We have all these other weird functions that we can deal with in limits, both infinite and infinitesimal. We need something to help us work with all of this structure. And what we need is more math. And that's what we're going to do next.